it's all well and good having a whole bunch of organic compounds and being able to name them. But what do they actually do? The real magic in chemistry is all about reactions. As we journey through the types of organic compounds, such as alkenes, alcohols, and so on, and the reactions that they undergo, you'll notice that each follows specific patterns and rules. This video will introduce you to the common types of reaction, so you'll be able to recognize what's going on and answer exam questions about them. The first pattern we will discuss is combustion. This is a pretty simple reaction, and you'll probably be familiar with it since combustion can be done on all sorts of compounds, not just organic ones. We'll go through combustion of an alkane and use the same process for any other organic compound you may come across. The only thing you really need to remember is that the organic compound will react with oxygen, and these reactants will produce carbon dioxide and water. Got that? Then you've got combustion. The only other thing to remember is that the reaction equation needs to be balanced. Let's look at ethane now. This looks pretty good, right? Except it's not yet balanced. The easiest way to balance is to first make sure the number of carbons is the same on both sides then hydrogen, then oxygen. So for this reaction, we end up with CH3CH3 CH3 plus 7 over 2 O2 reacts to produce 2 CO2 plus 3 H2O. Don't worry if you end up with a fraction, that's perfectly fine. Whenever you see a reaction using oxygen as a reactant and forming carbon dioxide and water as products, it's a pretty safe bet that you're dealing with a combustion reaction. Combustion involves the whole alkane disassociating. But what about if you only wanted to modify your compound a little bit? Substitution is exactly what it sounds like. Something gets replaced by something else. In fact, it's the functional group that gets replaced. Alkanes swap a hydrogen for a halogen. Alcohols swap their OH group for a halogen. Haloalkanes swap a halogen for an OH group or an NH2 group. And don't worry, these equations are much easier to balance than combustion. For the substitution of one chloropropane with aqueous KOH, we get a reaction that looks like this. You can recognize a substitution reaction by the functional group in the organic compound being swapped for a different one, but no change to or from any single, double, or triple bonds. We don't always have to give to receive, and sometimes we can add to our compounds without having to give anything up. Addition is a reaction that is special to alkenes and alkynes. What happens is one of those double or triple bonds gets broken, and something, either hydrogen, water, halogens, or hydrogen halides, gets added. So the carbons still have the four bonds they want. Let's take a look at the addition of water to ethene. Any time you see an alkene or alkyne dropping one of its carbon bonds, look for what has been added to the molecule instead, and recognize that an addition reaction has taken place. But can we do the opposite? What if we wanted to create an alkene with a double bond? The opposite of addition, as you can probably guess, is an elimination reaction. In an elimination reaction, two groups attached to two adjacent carbons gets removed and the carbons form a double or triple bond using their now spare bonds. Let's look at the removal of a hydrogen and a halogen from one bromopropane by reacting it with alcoholic KOH. Recognize an elimination reaction by the organic reactant having gained a bond by the time it becomes the organic product. Keeping up? It gets a little harder here, because we are talking about oxidation reactions, which is a term you may not be familiar with. Oxidation simply refers to the addition of oxygen to a molecule. Alkenes can be oxidized to form diols. It's very similar to addition, but two OH groups are added instead of one. This involves the oxidizing agent MnO4-, which is written as O into the equation. Recognize an oxidation reaction as being very similar to addition, but will only ever make a diol, and is the only reaction that will, at this level anyway. Last but not least, 
there's one more reaction type that you may have heard of in day-to-day life. Acid-base reactions occur for, you guessed it, acidic and basic organic compounds, amines and carboxylic acids. For fun, let's look at a reaction involving both of these things. Just like any acid-base reaction, there's a proton donor, in this case ethanoic acid, and a proton acceptor, methanamine. With water, acid-base reactions will produce an acidic or basic solution and a salt. With other reactants, carbon dioxide or hydrogen gas could also be produced. That product at the end there is actually one instead of two. It's a rather complicated salt, but don't worry, you don't need to be able to name it. Also notice that acid-base reactions are the only ones that use two-way arrows instead of one-way. You'll learn about why that is in the chemical reactivity videos. Recognize an acid-base reaction by the transfer of a proton or the production of a salt. You may have noticed that each of these reactions not only reacts with an organic compound, but requires a second reactant. We refer to this reactant as the reagent. It is important that you learn all of the conditions and reactants necessary for each reaction. And unfortunately, there is no real shortcut to doing so. For a detailed scheme, refer to the reagent study card. This was an overview to make you familiar with the types of reactions there are and what they look like. Videos on specific organic compounds will make you a lot more familiar with them.